Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I have Melody here in my Hi. shop with me and she has her own woodworking channel, Melody's Workbench. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be doing a collaboration today making a desk lamp. So let's dive in. Like a magenta card. <laughs> Uh, it's fun to work with your kids in the shop. And today I have my daughter Melody here with me. And she has her own YouTube channel, Melody's Workbench. That's all three different words. Uh, I'll leave a link to that down below where she actually does the, the talk throughout. So if you want to see the basically the same video, but with her descripting of what she's doing, <laughs> take a look at that. So what we're going to do is build a desk lamp for her desk where she does all of her homeschooling. It's kind of dark underneath her bed. So uh, we need to build a lamp for it. We're going to let her pick out what wood she wants. And she chose the Filipino mahogany. Um, and then, of course, white oak base, because you know, she's my daughter, it's white oak. <laughs> uh, we're going to make the, the, the base here, and we're kind of talking through the, the size and shape, because I have a general idea of what I want to build, but we came up with uh, four other different designs that we found online that we could mishmash through it. So we pulled out the elements from each one that we wanted and worked it together. And so we're trying to figure out how tall do we want it, how big do we want it. And I want her to be a part of it, getting her buy-in on it and uh, what what does she want it makes it that much more fun for her so we're going to start by cutting the base to length it's about six inches wide ish um, and if you want the the actual plans i have them available on my website and i've got a bunch of other kids plans on there as well um, so you can get all of the exact measurements of what they are a lot of times starting the saw is very very difficult so i will do the starting of it and then let her go to town and there's going to be a lot of um, starts and jerks and so I'm always trying to do it in different ways and seeing which ways work well for her uh, the the bench hook just doesn't work as well for the wide boards and so a lot of the other rest of the the sawing is done in the vise um, and part of that's because I like doing it in the vise but uh, letting her do as much as she wants and then if there's a section that's long and boring I might actually do some of that myself just to keep her engaged in it so we've cut the base out. Now we're going to do the vertical post that needs to go through and we're going to cut a three quarter inch hole into the base for the three quarter by three quarter inch rod to go down through. Speaking of which, the, the rod and the arm are gonna be made out of this Filipino mahogany. So we're going to be using the marking gauge. And this is a great skill to learn, being able to know where to hold and how to hold the marking gauge to get an accurate line. Uh, it, it sounds very simple, but it is one of those things in, until you wrap your brain around it, you get that muscle memory it, it's hard to do so i do it once or twice to show her and then i hand it to her and i have my hand on top of hers to hold it into place and then eventually she has to, she can do it and there's always that reminder of i ah, keep the fence against the board <laughs> always reminding her of that um yeah, uh, so every one of these skills, it's its a brand new thing. It's brand new muscle memory, especially for kids. They don't have anything else to connect it to. I find that the Japanese pole saws are a lot easier to, to learn. Uh, they're just easier to function. They, they are harder to steer, though they are easier to keep on track. So as long as you can start her on track, she keeps on going down the line. So we're, we're going to cut down uh, the three-quarter by three-quarter inch rod, and then we're going to turn around and the arm sticking out is three quarter by two and a quarter. And so I can start it off and then give it to her and let her cut. Um, but due to the, the time period we had for this one, we actually had to, to video it while Luke was here to shoot the video. Um, I had to do some of it so I can show her um, how fast I normally do it, which is, well, it's, it's like this. <laughs> oh, done. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, so, Every now and then I have to step into, but whenever possible, I try and let her do all of the work. And especially with small cuts, cross cuts like this, she can rip right through them pretty quickly. Or cross cut right through them. <laughs> the saw wasn't quite deep enough to make the cut all the way down, so I had to snap it a little bit. But oh well. Now, once we get these cut off, we're going to actually plane them down. We want to get rid of the saw marks. And because the saw went a little bit off track one side or the other, it means we had to tilt the plane in order to plane it level. And so this is another skill to learn. And then we also have to teach keeping the force on one side of the plane when you're starting it and then on the, the heel when you're finishing it. And now we're kind of getting an idea for how big will this actually be. Do we want to make any changes? How will this actually come together? Because I want to keep her in the loop. I want her to be able to make decisions about we're doing it this way. Do we want to change things? 
a lot of the time I'm going to be demonstrating uh, and showing this is how you do it and then I'm going to hand it to her and let her do it and then I'll start with keeping my hands on the plane with her and then once she's up to it I let her go at it. Muscle memory is not something that is easily learned. It's something that takes a lot of practice. And for those of us who've done it for a while, it's actually really good to then teach someone else because you suddenly realize, oh yeah, I remember doing that. That wasn't very fun. <laughs> and so you get to get a better appreciation for what they're going forward through and what you can, you can work with. On the end of the arm, we're gonna create a notch that the vertical fits into. And so we can work on that and actually show how you can guide the saw with looking at the mirror. You can look at the reflection in the saw to see if you're straight up and down. You can see how here we're cutting with it at an angle. And I want to show what that actually looks like. You have one saw that mark that is at an angle and another one that is straight up and down. So she's looking at the, the mirror image in it and keeping it vertical. Back on the base, we need to drill a hole for the, uh, the for the vertical to go into. And it is a three quarter by three quarter inch square vertical. So we're gonna start with a three quarter inch auger. Now this is too much work for her to hold and turn. So I'm actually going to hold it in place and then let her turn. And here we ran into the problem that the, the snail on the end was actually starting to split the board. It's a, it's a wedge. And so we had to put it into the vise so that the vise will keep that board together while we drill it out. If you're ever drilling close to the edge, you might find out that you're splitting it. Um, put it in the vise and that will hold it together. You can see how we're, we're pinching across the, the cut. We're going to go until the snail pokes out the other side, turn the board around, and then come from the other side. And that way we'll get a really nice clean entry and exit hole. Not that those really matter because we're going to be coming back through and chopping it out with a chisel in a minute. Get a square yeah. Peg. yeah, how exactly do you put a square peg in a round hole? Well, let's fix that. So we're going to pull out the hold fast and lock this down in place on the bench and we can start chiseling it out. Now, I, I can give her the chisel and the hammer and say go to town, but when it, you're first getting started, it's easier for someone else to hold the chisel and someone else hold the mallet and work on it. And then you have someone hold the chisel, uh, someone hold the mallet while you hold the chisel, and you give one half of the project at a time. And rather than trying to learn both hitting and chiseling, it's just easier to do one or the other. So we're gonna square it out until that peg fits in, turn the block over, and then chisel from the other side. So we have a nice square hole for this uh, vertical to slide all the way through the base. While we have the chisel and mallet out, we're also going to move over to the, the arm that goes on top. Because we cut down on either side, now we're going to chisel out the, the waste in between. And so for that, it's just like taking out a, a dovetail. We're going to chop in, and then we come in from an angle, and we come back and we chop in, and we do that until we're down about halfway. Then we flip it over and do the other side until that block pops out. And now we have our chunk out of there. Yay! So. Now we want to make sure that the arm fits in. In this case, it didn't quite. We had to remove a little bit more, but that was because we had one angle, that one side of it was cut at an angle. So I could show her how to pair that out. And now we can put this on there and kind of get an idea of how and what size it is. And do, do, do we want to make any adjustments here before we go on? At this point, you give her the chance to do a little buy-in. Do you actually like it like this? Do you want to make it taller? Do you want to make it shorter? The arm is going to go through that square hole, but we're going to put a peg in at one point, then slide it in, and then make a mark where the other peg is. And this way, the two holes, the outside of the two holes, will be the exact difference of the board that it's going through. Again, you can see on this one we split. Uh, it's not as much of an issue here because we, we're going to be putting the, the pins through it, and we'd like a little bit of force on there. So we can close it up and ream those out and get them to the, the size we want them to be. Speaking of pins, I have a little bit of 3 8 dowel on stock, so we're going to use that. Now the cord kit we came with, um, you actually can fit through there and it needs to fit into it, but the nut um, needs to screw onto the head, but there isn't enough threading on the, the head for the nut to come through. So we're actually going to drill a large hole for the nut to fit in. And then we're going to drill a smaller hole for the head to fit in. So there's the, the heads. You always drill the large hole first and then the small hole second. So the small hole is on the bottom where the head fits into. And then the nut can fit back onto the cord and screw onto the other side. We're also going to drill some holes through the arm and through the verticals for the cord to go through. Because we're actually going to have the cord weave through this whole structure to do some, to do some cord work on it. 
There is a bolt that will go through the arm, through the vertical, and then through the other half of the arm. And this will actually clamp the arm onto the vertical and allow us to tighten it down on. So I want to make sure that that hole goes all the way through all the pieces and uh, the bolt can actually fit through it. Let's do a test fit with the bolt and make sure everything is the way we want it to be. In this case, we found that the arm um, couldn't lift up as high as we wanted it to, so we had to round off the ends of the vertical in order to make it stick up far enough. You can see how here it has a short field of travel and we want it to go up a little farther than that. So we got a um, block plane and rounded off the ends of the vertical so that it could rotate all the way up. Speaking of which, I'm teaching kids about tools. What is a tool? And so rather than me grabbing it and using it, it's often better to say, hey, go get this. And then when they say, oh, it's not that, you can then give them ideas so that they get a better idea of not only what it is, but where it is um, and getting the names with it. Chamfering is a great way to, to learn how to use a spoke shave or a block plane. And uh, it's a, an easy way to do uh, control, especially with the, the size, kids find it a little bit easier. And watch out for your fingers. <laughs> it takes a little bit of trust to hold things, but uh, actually she does pretty well at this. And it's a great way to teach then you want to keep the weight on the toe when you're starting and then the weight on the heel when you're ending. Otherwise you're going to be starting at an angle and you're going to be skipping right off the bat. And of course chamfering angles is just a, a great way to learn um, grain direction, planing. There's just so many things to it and it's a very simple, easy thing to, to catch on to. We are going to cut off the corners on both the arm and the base just to add a little bit of uh, uh, decorative to it. And it also it's one more way that you can show another way to cut. My bench hook has an angle on it so it makes it a little bit easier for cutting 45 degrees off. So now we can come through and chamfer this and I can teach about grain direction here because you want to chamfer with the grain, not against it, especially being 45 degrees, you're just gonna get a lot of tear out. And it's on small things, it's, on small surfaces, it's sometimes a little more difficult to get an even plane. It's easier to tip it one way or the other. So again, it's a great way to teach hand-eye coordination. We're going to do all the final smooth up and planing uh, before we put this together and finish it. And then on this thing, we're actually going to do a little bit of carving here because this is a wood by right project, even though it's my daughter on here. Yes, we're going to do carving. And it's one of these things that scares a lot of people to think about carving but uh, anyone can do it, especially a simple line carving like what we'll do here and uh, teaching it to a 10-year-old. Um, she can do all the carving she wants to do. So we're going to finish up all the chamfering and uh, then work through that. Uh, for the actual the, the carving, we're going to go over to the pic computer and, uh, um, and find a file we want. I, I go on to Google Docs, uh, excuse me, um, Google Images and, and search for things. In this case, it is a Celtic weave. And so I look up Celtic Weave Trinity, and she wanted a heart. Um, so we're going to get a Celtic Weave Trinity with a heart in there. A very simple design. There's some straight edges, there's some curves, and we get to teach it through. So I'm going to demonstrate this whole thing. We're going to glue it down with just a simple craft stick, and that makes it very easy to then follow the pattern. So I'm going to do a line or two just demonstrating what I'm doing so she can see it. And then I'm going to hold the chisel and let her tap it. How much force is it needed? And this is a good skill because right now she's fo focusing on hitting the chisel. She's not focusing on where's the chisel going. She's just focusing on making sure she hits the chisel. And that is a skill to learn. And then we have to learn about carving rounds. And so on these, the chisel moves. And so she has to focus on hitting the chisel as the chisel is moving around. So as she hits it, I'm moving the end and she has to focus on making sure she hits it right. Then, once we get that down, then I can have her hold it while I chisel it, while I hit the chisel, and she has to then focus on guiding the chisel. Again, we want to make this sharp. Um, keep the tools sharp, especially when carving, it makes them far, far safer. And so, once she gets a chance to hold it and I hit it, then I give her the chance to do both. In this case, you have to practice hitting the end of the chisel, which takes accuracy, and then guiding the chisel. So you're focusing at two points at one time, which once you do it for a while, it becomes fairly straightforward to know where the end of the chisel is. Your whole body just locks into place. And then you can just focus on guiding the chisel. But doing one and, and then doing the other is easier than learning both at the exact same time. So whenever possible, break up the tasks so that you're learning the skills individually rather than trying to learn two or more skills at the same time.
After we've done that, we can card scrape it off, and using a card scraper is very difficult for small hands. If I thought about it at the time, I probably would have set up the cabinet scraper and let her scrape it off with that. Uh, but this was a, a, a fun, another tool to learn. For the pegs, we need to round off the corner so that they go into the holes well. So I can show her on the file, and then she can rotate the, the, uh, the peg as it goes up and round off the corners so that they fit in there. For the bolt that goes through the arm into the vertical, we needed to cut that a little shorter because it was sticking out too long. It was a fun time to show, yeah, you can cut through steel. And it's the exact same thing as doing it with, uh, with a saw. For finish, of course, we're using boiled linseed oil and paste wax. The, the best finish that you can. <laughs> for a small, small thing like this, it'll work perfectly. And I really like how it brings out the color in the white oak, and it really starts to make it shine. Rather than just being the, the bland white, it really comes through. And this the Filipino mahogany really comes out with the color. I, I love what it does with that. We're going to let it soak up as much as it wants, and then we'll, we'll wipe off the excess. And then we can put on the paste wax after that. It's a really simple, easy thing to do. And especially with homemade boiled linseed oil like this, you can dip your hands into it and go to town. It's fun for the kids. I wouldn't do that with store-bought BLO because it is uh, there, there are drying chemicals in there you just don't want on your hands. So um, let, the, uh, let the kids work with the homemade stuff. So we're going to put one peg through the vertical, then drive it down in. And then we can put the other peg through underneath. And so this will actually lift the base up off of it, at getting a little bit of a, uh, an intrigue to the way the bench goes. And I kind of like the, the design. It's slightly different and kind of fun and, and very simple. There's no glue in this. The pegs just hold it together. And then we're going to have a bolt, nut, and washer. And if I had a wing nut on hand, I probably would have used that. But in this case, we're just going to lock it down with a nut, and that will uh, that will hold this together and pinch it in place, giving it the right amount of friction. And this also gives a chance to teach kids about nuts and bolts and the direction they go on and how they turn and all that type of thing. I really need to crank it down a little bit tighter than she could hold it. Um, but uh, with that, it goes on, and this adds a little bit of friction to it so that you can position the lamp head at any height you want. And now we can feed it on through. Put the lamp head up into the top, then feed the nut onto the cord and tighten the head down on, and then run the cord through the arm and then into the vertical, plug it in, and turn it on. I had to uh, wire a, uh, a plug onto the end so we can get the cord through all the holes. This is an LED Edison shape, and uh, it looks really, really bright in this one, but we replaced it with a 25-watt uh, a uh, replacement bulb, and it's, uh, it's actually a lot dimmer in person. Might put a shade on it sometime, but with that smaller one, it works pretty well. So there you have it. This is a fun, really simple project. I will have plans available for this on my website, so you can find a link to that down below. Uh, so this will go on Melody's bench. So we got the magenta cord just for her. Uh, yeah, on her, and it won't be going on her workbench. It'll actually go on her, her desk. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a fun project. Did you enjoy this? Yes. Yeah? What, what was your favorite part? Um, putting in the light bulb. <laughs> it's a very simple project, no glue needed. You can make it in a really, really quick amount of time. I'll leave a link to the cord set I have, but most big box stores are also going to have that out there. Um, very simple, very fun, and a really quick little project. So a great beginner's project. So I hope you like this. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to put out your thoughts on there. I do read through them all. Um, I respond to as many as we possibly can, and uh, Melody will be looking at a few of them too. So. <laughs> So if you do like this kind of content, think about becoming a patron on Patreon or click that join button and become a member here on the channel. And that really does help out the channel. I mean, it really helps out if you're a subscriber and you click the ring bell. But if you become a, uh, a member, there's some other content that we put out. We often try and do uh, little lives every now and then I'm in the shop working around. But I do want to say thank you to everyone who's a patron, everyone who's scrolling over on the side. You are the ones helping make this channel possible. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's links down below. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. So we had to make a desk lamp because due to my own deficiency as I passed them on to my daughter so she needs a little bit more brightness.